Markets are made up of many parts, trading, execution, clearing, and players, commercial firms, fund managers, brokers, and prop traders. Once in a while, you meet someone who's turned all of those gears and played all of those roles. Meet Neil Kotke, chairman of Kotke Associates, who grew up on a family farm in Illinois and went on to become one of the most respected and knowledgeable futures markets professionals in the business. He was there for the 1987 crash as chairman of the Clearing Corporation of the Chicago Board of Trade. He served twice as vice chairman of the Chicago Board of Trade, first under Billy O'Connor and later under Tom Cunningham. He broke into the markets as a merchandiser with Continental Grain Company, working his way up at offices in Minneapolis, Norfolk, Virginia, New York City, and Paris, France, before finally settling in Chicago. After surviving the wild grain markets of the early 70s, he decided to strike out on his own as a pit trader in the soy complex. He also formed a clearing firm called Agra Trading. With the trending migration towards electronic trading, Kotke left the trading floor in 1998. With his proprietary trading group, he still places traders on the trading floors, but only in the option pits and only in the listed space. Here is our John Lothian's profile interview with Neil Kotke. How did you get your start in trading? After um, graduate school and I was in the Army then in the, uh, in the 60s, I worked for Continental Grain Company and I began <coughs> working for Continental in uh, the Upper uh, Northwest and uh, did some time on the East Coast, both in Norfolk and New York. I was also uh, with Continental's overseas offices in uh, Paris. And I was in Chicago. so. That period was my beginning period in trading. It was a grain merchandiser where Continental Grain was a grain export house. How has trading over the years changed and how has your trading changed with it? The volumes of trading, the amounts of capital that are employed in futures markets are uh, substantially greater than they were uh, uh, 40 uh, some years ago when I began in the market. Um, uh, the breadth of the markets have changed because you now have uh, financial futures um, in addition to all the, uh, the core commodity uh, futures. When I began training for myself uh, in, in the mid-70s, uh, I was primarily a pit trader. Uh, my approach to the market was that of a spreader. I was always trading relationships. Um, and even while I was concentrating on spreading in one market, I would also at the same time be spreading or have spread positions on in other markets. As my trading expanded and as the company's base expanded, then I moved from the pit to trading upstairs and that was an entirely via uh, orders of uh, telephonic uh, delivery. And that of course uh, was transformed then into screen trading when uh, the electronic screens became viable. What was the first lesson you learned in trading? The salient lesson is discipline. And, uh, and that is manifest in many ways. I mean, it's size of trade, uh, it's discipline in stop uh, loss, and it's discipline in uh, also what your, um, what your profit objectives are. You know? You want to you want to have a plan and you want to adhere to it. And all the, there are many ways you can deviate from plans. So the discipline to uh, let's call it uh, self-direct and autocorrect is that's that's key to me. What is the most important lesson you learned? You're playing in an arena where you don't have to worry about the other participants in the market. You just have to manage your own exposure to the market. You can describe that as self-discipline. You can describe it another way as risk control. It really, when boiled down to the essence, it's the same thing. What lessons did the market teach you the hard way? You have to have a, a certain amount of ego in order to participate in the market. And so it's it's always a um, painful experience when 
uh, you're clearly wrong and uh, the market in a rather rude fashion uh, tells you you're wrong. What was your best trade like? It's a risky type trade and this happened to be old crop, new crop beans. And um, it was in versus just like a bull market come on and build and build and work slowly. But when the, when the inverse erodes, it really doesn't erode, it liquidates rather quickly. So uh, catching the turn in, a, in an old crop, new crop bean inverse uh, and being short the old crop, uh, you know, the money then comes rather quickly and, 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 and um, you don't have to look back on it. What was your worst trade like? One of the more recent uh, trades that was, it was, I don't know if it was the worst one or not, but the, the recent uh, bull market, uh, the summer that ended in, uh, in August and came apart rather rapidly, I was slow to uh, change my view on it. And um, it's, once again, it's the same thing. You, you have to respect the market. And, Every time you relearn that that lesson, it's um, so there's a there's quite a little pain for. It. But that would be in the same category of several trades of the same nature. How do you trade in a crisis? You want to identify the kind of market that you're in, and um, uh, there've been exceptional times when uh, the market, the most extraordinary kind of. Uh, events either lock the market one way or the other, and if you're wrong, that for you is a crisis. So what you do is you, uh, you do trade small. Uh, you, you cut back your size, and uh, you really sharpen your risk uh, parameters. How do you manage volatility? You don't necessarily, just because you're not getting much market movement, decide I got to have to trade, trade larger because I have to make more money. Uh, that's a, uh, usually a mistake. It's, you keep the same size. You know, you're, that's an important lesson to learn. Um, in, in more volatile markets, uh, you don't necessarily have to cut back your size. Uh, they sometimes then there's just more opportunity. If you were starting over, what would you do differently? I think that probably I would have become a trader on my own, and as I would have bought my own membership earlier in my career, I had learned a great deal uh, and, and owe quite a lot to the period where I was working for Continental Grain Company. But uh, I, could have, uh, I could have cut a few years off that. When you hire or back a trader, what traits do you look for? There is no checklist that I know of that you can go through. I suppose you could say, you know, it takes a... Um, it takes a certain kind of uh, mindset mindset to be a trader. Uh, you, I don't like to, it's, it's the Goldilocks, you know, you've got to be able to take on a certain amount of risk, but you have to be able to respect it at the same time. And uh, finding that blend, if a person can find that in themselves, then they can be a trader. How did growing up on a farm affect your development as a trader? I was uh, drawn to the grain industry, and I'm sure that had a great deal to do with my background working and living on a farm. And so it, it helped me understand and begin in the industry. And, and for that reason, I've been, I've been more of a fundamental thinker about the markets than I have a technical trader. Uh, I, I try to look at the market from certainly the perspective of the producer, the farmer, and then also the intermediate uh, handlers of grain and processors and so forth. What are your favorite markets to trade? Well, I'm more partial to the uh, grains and meats than I am uh, energies and, and metals and financials. That's where I've spent more time and I think I have more understanding. Do you have any experience with rogue trading? We've had a couple of instances at the firm where you know, trader, traders have uh, moved outside of the parameters that were 
uh, explicitly um, agreed to between uh, the, the House and the trader. How did the 1987 stock market crash impact your trading and trading philosophy? It particularly was um, uh, devastating to people in the um, in the bond market because uh, you know the movement in in the bonds in this case the bonds moved up uh, far exceeded uh, what um, certainly had been recent history and what was really uh, what people thought was in the realm of reasonableness. What does the term black swan mean to you? And how do you manage this risk? It's really an attack on uh, what everybody is, um, accepts as normal and uh, believes that, well, if we just, <clears throat> if our recent history is two standard or three standard deviations encompasses that breadth of the market, well, then that's enough, all we have to think about. And that's a very dangerous uh, way to approach anything, and specifically markets. So I'm going to bring a, a, a bucket of jelly beans in here. There's 10,000 jelly beans in there, but one of them's poison. Now I'm going to ask you, do you want a handful of jelly beans? Do you want even one jelly bean? And the answer would be, no, you don't. It's another um, demonstration of the severe impact that even in very remote event can have. As a risk manager for other traders, what keeps you up at night? We're very careful uh, about the tail risk in, in option trading, which is the, that's the, that, that's the thief in the night that maybe, you know, where you, you, you just don't see. So I can't, I can't say it's obviously our risk controls are not perfect, but uh, we, we try to scrub them down pretty good. I sleep well at night.